Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're continuing on with our festive season items and we're going to be starting on something called a scraffito. It's an Italian term and it has to do with embossing tools. And I've got a couple of them. Um, they have different size of little ball um, aspects to them on either end. Some are bigger than others. And we'll be using that. Um, so we're going to take you right back to kindergarten maybe. <laughs> when uh, we did work with crayons and uh, then we covered it with black uh, ink and then we scratched into it to reveal, um, you know, whatever you had in mind at the time. Today we're going to be working uh, maybe with a little bit of um, lettering and um, we're going to start off with just putting a bunch of different colors down just like you did in those olden days. <laughs> and then we'll cover it with black acrylic uh, paint, uh, probably maybe with a little bit of our um, fluid acrylics, my carbon black fluid acrylics. and. Um, our uh, Amsterdam acrylic paint and the uh, good old Crayola crayons here and then we'll move on to a, a couple of uh, other exercises so let's start with this one and uh, oh I did I did want to show you some of my little previous exercises now this um, Wax acts as a resist, obviously, and now um, when you print it off, you're not going to get the nice uh, colors from the crayons. You will get whatever resists, uh, whatever ink you've put on the, brayered on the on the plate. And we're working with a five by seven uh, um, Jelly Arts plate today. Now you're not going to get anything really distinct. You'll probably have to work with it a bit more. But it's an interesting process that I hope you'll try. So then on we go here. Uh, and of course this is the silly fun part. You can just um, start putting some crayon down. And I'm cross hatching. Get as much of the crayon as you can because when you're scratching into it, you're going to probably scratch into the wax. So, more is better. The more you've covered the white, the better. All right, I think we sort of got it under control. I'm just going to take this to the waste paper basket to get any of the wax rubbings off. Right. And we're going to need another sheet of paper here. Just a garbage sheet uh, because you're going to be brayering on some of the black paint. And then we'll have to wait for it to dry. That's the only tedious part. Just going to add a little bit of the fluid black. This can be, um, well it doesn't have to be thick, but it can be a good coverage. At this point you're not so much worried about the transfer. And we'll just wait for it to dry. Josh will put a nice interlude in and uh, we'll be back in a flash. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Right, and we're back. So I have drawn out my uh, letters. Um, this time I'm using the word peace. I think we need, need an awful lot more of that in this world. And done our, our little holly and the little berries. So what we're trying to do is get it ready to print on the gel plate. And it's uh, very experimental. It doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. But it's one way of getting uh, calligraphy onto uh, the gel plate and having it print off. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, might have to run it a couple of times. You never know about these things. But we'll give it a shot. Okay. So I have my um, little benchmark um, X-Acto knife here. And we just got, and I've drawn it out just in uh, graphite. And it makes a nice line. Now you want to sort of get rid of the stuff, so maybe we just need a paper towel or something to wipe your blade as you go. And just take your time with this. And scrape it away. Uh, it's really important to have that black layer uh, very, very dry. I used my little heat tool. And what makes it so interesting uh, are these um, marks. And some of the black stays behind, so it's really quite fascinating. You could use your embossing tools, but they don't make as wide a mark as my X-Acto knife does, and that's the whole point you want to get as much of the black off as you can. Without having too many secondary marks, which I'm getting here. Um, okay. And again, you probably have to just to get rid of the wax. Now try and stay in the wax because that's the resist. That's what's going to work on the gel plate. If you scrape too deeply, it will pick up the black ink uh, in ways you don't want it to. Give the little letters some serifs. Uh, those are the little bumps at the end of letters. Make this a bit wider. Just emphasize that first part and straighten out this one. If you've goofed, you can always uh, put the black back. Okay, on to our little holly leaves. So you're scraping just enough to get the black off, the black paint off, but revealing the wax underneath. Once you have them transferred, you can do whatever color you want with them. I think we're kind of ready here. I'm just going to take it off the paper. I had it taped down, so. Okay, ready for the plate. Now I'm thinking I should maybe a 
touch up these some of these areas and otherwise we're going to have printing problems so I'm just going to put some black down and that will resist so you can fix it so it's so um, I've, I've from fixing these, I'm going to take a little heat tool just to dry that and make sure that that's not going to print. And uh, we'll take a little break and be right back. Okay, we've dried that um, sort of fix-up uh, part and now we're going to the gel plate. Yeah, just a little bit of black. Just a regular Amsterdam paint. And now we're just at the regular transfer process, as if you're transferring uh, graphite or um, an image, like a photograph. So all the same rules apply, not too thick, not too thin, make it nice and even. Place your lettering down uh, in a nice spot, probably over this way more. Don't forget everything reverses. And if it's at a slight angle, that's uh, <laughs> just interesting. <laughs> Something like that, you're not going to get square, and it's not really all that. Okay, just going to just burnish the area that the lettering is on. Now the paper should pick up all the black ink except what's uh, on the resist. That is the cutting plan. <laughs> and hopefully well, it picks up most of it. So we have a little bit of residual paint, but that's okay. I think what we'll do in this case is we won't print it right away. You could because the ink is still wet. What we're going to do is uh, add some color and we'll think about the th colors that we used initially on that, um, you know, the wax part. And we're just going to let that dry a little bit more. I might use my heat tool so that's noisy, so we'll take a quick interlude here. So I've put a few daubs on my little plate here. Um, this is folk art, metallic, amethyst, and uh, acrylic. <laughs> uh, fuchsia fun, it's called. And these are just dollar store paints. And a little bit of my um, Amsterdam, um, what's this, uh, Prussian blue, okay. So we'll roll all out a little bit of this, maybe. We have to have some white because you have to have an opaque color as a release coat. So just put a, there's a bit of gold here. A little bit more of the fuchsia. And then some darker color here and there. That's so the lettering shows up. Again, not too thick because otherwise it will not release that lower layer. Rearing off here. Okay, 
Let's give it a shot. In this case, rub hard because you've got to release that lower level. And hopefully our lettering will show up. And it does a little bit, but I think we need to... We lost the P for peace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have E's. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, just see if we can run a, a ghost print and see if that will turn up better. The recess should still be working. It's funny because now that the paint is drying, um, I'm seeing it more clearly. So it could be just the fact that there's a process to go through here. And the black in the background actually helps. Ah. <laughs> Well, now we have the P and not the rest of it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, but you get the idea. You'll have to play with this for a while. I mean, I did get, I did get it um, previously. You can see the P now quite distinctly. It's now that the paper is dried. You just need to reinforce it a little bit. And we'll show that at the end. I want to get on with the next exercise. So... So we're going to start this by just um, drawing in our word peace. On the white paper, I can see it fairly well, but you won't see it on the camera, I don't think. I'm just reinforcing it. I have several layers of paper underneath there. Just so it um, goes more deeply. You're not really scratching so much as embossing in a way. All right, so let's do our graphite. And you'll see the letters revealed. It's magic. I kind of like this sort of scratchy aspect of the graphite, so. And we might, I'm not sure I want to polish it that much because then it might fill in the lettering, so we'll just leave it as is. Okay. And we need to rub that down. And then we put the ink on. Yes, of course. 
That works good. So you can put the ink on right away. And then uh, my nemesis Prussian blue. <laughs> It's so pretty. It's such a pretty color. The Scarlet Pimpinel is uh, <laughs> Prussian blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have more fun here. <laughs> okay. Now remember this layer has to be thin, thin, thin. So brayer it off on your sheet. Uh, it's just too much fun here. Yeah. Okay. And that's the way with experimenting. You try stuff and, you know, it works sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it gives you trouble. <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay, not too bad. Again, you will have to, uh, my A didn't show up very well, but you will have to outline it a little bit, but it's pretty good. <laughs> so the successful one was a ghost print of the first failure. <laughs> this is too funny. Oh, what a day. Anyway, and I really like it. It's nice. and. Uh, uh, you can do, of course, um, you know, another background on here, wiping off this area so that it doesn't print. Or maybe put a um, mask over this part and then print around it, and I think that would be really nice. And the letters show, turned out really well. Okay, on with more Scrofito. Now the last part is uh, a little bit... Uh, different in the sense that you're working entirely with paint and the scratching is going to be on the plate itself. So we will get on with that uh, momentarily. So I've laid out some uh, paints here for the final exercise and it's just black and Prussian blue and a little bit of brown and uh, rolling it out on the plate we need a dark background. We'll print a couple of sheets. Sure there's no white showing. A nice solid color. Looks good. And a little bit more for the next one. Now I've tried this with doing a back uh, background uh, with black and then printing a light color on top, but when you print it, the dark is on the top and it just doesn't work very well. So printing it separately is the way to go. And just make sure this layer is good. Perfect. Okay, that looks really nice and the blue is more visible. Fine, okay for the next one we are just going to have a fairly thick layer and I'm going to mix some white, some Naples yellow, uh, red. It's a nice color and just some uh, warm gray. All Amsterdam paints as usual. Now this part is the tricky part because it's got to be fairly thick so that you can scrape it. 
if it's too thin, the paint will dry on the plate and you can't scrape it any longer. So, and I have my little owl as reference, my little burrowing owl. We're going to be doing this one with the upraised foot. Now, I was doing one, and I forgot all about the foot. <laughs> I had to do it again. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So you're just scraping paint away. So it's more scraffito stuff. And his little body. This is a very tiny owl. It's a, called the burrowing owl. And he's got these little, sort of like drumstick uh, legs. And then a stick at the end. And his outstretched uh, claws. And you're gonna have to, and we'll use the other tool for getting that done more precisely. Actually has big feet. And this one, and we won't forget this time, is he's got the leg to this point. And then it sort of goes back. And then he's got his claws, so he's got standing on one leg, basically. You don't really see much of the third claw, just the two. And you can see how big his feet are from this. And then, and again, I'll use my tool just to define it a little bit more. And scrape the paint off. I'm using plastic, of course, because anything metallic would hurt your gel plate, so you don't want to be doing that. Just a peek of the through. Okay. And then we'll just put a tree limb there. Give it some branches. And then we'll start, it sort of has a middle meridian here. And there's a little bit of the wings showing on the side. And we're doing all this negatively so that anything that's dark is what we're scraping off. So any of the, these little um, feather marks, dark feather marks are, and here. We're not actually doing the feathers, we're doing the shadows of the feathers. And the darkest of the feathers. Okay. So for the most part, you're painting this thing negatively. Right, there's this sort of triangular shape on the side. That's dark, we'll put that in. It gives the head dimension. This um, triangular shape here where his beak is. And then his eyebrows we have to leave because they're light, uh, sort of furry light areas. So hopefully we can scrape that. Good. And then the circular eyes. And we'll use our tool here for the, the pupil. And then after it's dried, you can put a highlight in with Posca pen. And then for some of these finer details, 
you can use your little embossing tool. Okay, so let's put the, the beak in. That's always the worrying part. So it's got to be just right. And everything around it is dark, so you're outlining this dark area, taking the paint away. And that's probably something that needs to be scraped. That's better. I'm exaggerating the beak because this is a, a print and you want it to show. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so we'll print it on the first sheet. Have I forgotten anything, Josh? Did I forget anything? <laughs> you never know. Oh, my trees. Yes, I knew I'd forgotten about something. Yep, okay. Getting carried away. Yes, we need a background of something interesting. Okay. Let's put some group of seven trees in here. Just gnarly old things. Maybe a little one. Another one up here, maybe in the distance. As Bob Ross would say, a happy little tree. <laughs> I don't know if it's so happy. I think it looks a little bit disgusted, but anyway. <laughs> okay. And then a little bit of land contour here, just soft lines to give the feeling that there's you know, something happening in the background. It just can be much softer because you'd want the owl to really show up. Oh, okay, let's print this and see what we get. Now I'm using the second sheet, which is a bit lighter, uh, because sometimes the ghost print is better. So I'm doing it more lightly because that was quite a thick layer of paint and it might squish into the dark areas. So you have to be a little bit careful. And, ooh, that looks pretty good. And our, our little gesture has a good beak on them. And our gnarly trees. Okay, at this stage, your uh, ink is still quite um, workable. So if you want to scrape anything, you know, just to define something, like his little claw here could be a little bit more visible just to show that he's standing and this thing could be a little bit more curved so you get the feeling that they're claws right you can only do that you know because the paint dries very quickly but that's a small correction you can do now this is the ghost print and And if the paint is still not totally dry yet, I think we're not going to get it on black paper this time. Now, you see what I mean about um, how dramatic? This is a ghost print, and it seems to be more dramatic and has uh, maybe a little bit more character to it. We kind of lost the uh, demarcation in the in the owl, uh, owl's claws here, which you could probably put in still. But the beak is nice, and there's a highlight in this one. So they both have some good qualities. So anyway, give this a shot. <laughs> and, uh, it's a lot of fun. It uh, You can, of course, just use black paper. But I kind of like the different tones that you get uh, by doing your own black paper, you know, background uh, first. So, as usual, take care of yourselves and your families. Thanks so much for watching. 
Coming up is our marbling, and uh, I think I've told you before that I don't do the formal Hebrew marbling. We just sort of have a free-for-all, and uh, two or three weeks of that, and it, uh, join me for that, and we will see you another time. <laughs> Take care and bye for now. I'm going to have to cut this part out. <laughs> I have to lift it. <laughs> Cuts funny, it works now. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, it's too funny. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, well maybe we'll continue with this. Um, what happened is that I'm supposed to put the, this on uh, the gel plate and so I used my old piece uh, and put it directly on the plate uh, and it showed up. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> uh, is it the carbonies or <laughs> just a... Uh, the day. Okay. Anyway.